Welcome back to Moose and the Loose. My name's David. Today, we've got conservatives ripping liberals. Rachel Thomas, she goes off. She really goes off. Not only does she scold the liberals, she scolds the speaker. you got to check this out. They have not hit a single emissions target. But do you know who has succeeded? Farmers. According to the Global Institute for Food Security, the carbon footprint for wheat grown in Saskatchewan is 67% lower than the rest of the world. So why is the Prime Minister punishing Canadian farmers? farmers for this incredible accomplishment. Instead of blaming farmers for his carbon tax failures, will he not axe his plan to increase the tax on April 1st? Absolutely disgraceful. The Honourable Minister for Agriculture and Agri-Food. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And being a farmer, I, firmly, I fully understand the importance and the effect of climate change, Mr. Speaker. And, I, and we understand how important it is to take care of the land. That is why we as a government have invested $1.5 million to help farmers and processors reduce their environmental footprint, footprint and stay on the cutting edge. We will continue to fight climate change and, to, and work with farmers and ranchers right across this country, Mr. Speaker. I think he meant $1.5 billion. Lawrence there always just leans on that one thing, and he leans on him being a farmer however many years ago. It's, man, this guy's got no credibility. He's lost it all. Farmers are succeeding where the Liberal NDP carbon tax coalition is failing. And what is farmers' reward for this? A 23% increase in the carbon tax on April 1st. Common sense conservatives will ax the tax and reward farmers for those accomplishments. Did you know that wheat grown in Canada can travel around the world three and a half times before it has the same carbon footprint as wheat grown in Europe? Canadian farmers have accomplished this through innovation, not carbon taxes. Will the Liberals finally admit they were wrong? Pass 234 unamended and ask their plan to increase the carbon tax on April 1st. Nope, they won't. The Honourable Minister too busy stealing our money. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, just uh, last week, in fact, I was visiting a farmer in Peterborough who is working on re- regenerative agriculture, but I, I find it... <laughs> Little Gilbo can't handle the heat. Colleagues, order. Colleagues. <laughs> the chair is having great difficulty hearing the response from the minister due to other folks taking the floor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I do find it quite ironic to be lectured by the Conservative Party on support to farmers when at the end of last year, they voted against Unfarm Climate Action Fund to support sustainable agriculture. They voted against Dairy Innovation and Investment Fund for farmers, Mr. Speaker. They voted against funding and support support of dairy, poultry, and egg supply management producers. On this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, we believe in our farmers, we support our farmers, and we help them to fight climate change. He looks really nervous. Just watch that back and watch his hand down here. It looks like it's like, you know when you're really nervous for like a a presentation or something? Just watch his hand. Poultry and egg supply management producers. On this side of the House, Mr. Speaker, we believe in our farmers, we support our farmers, and we help them to fight change. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> the Honourable... <I'm> super stressed. <laughs> the Honourable Member from Lethbridge. Common sense Conservatives will ax the tax, build the homes, stop the crime and fix the budget. That's what our commitment to Canadians is. Meanwhile, the NDP Liberal Prime Minister can't help himself but skyrocket the crime increase the corruption and of course he's just not worth the cost because he's causing it to go through the roof but he's incredibly hypocritical because for him pollution is free he can just jet set around the world while canadians continue to pay on april 1st they'll see an increase of 23 percent on the carbon tax my question is simple will the liberals finally side with conservatives and scrap the tax the honorable minister for natural resources the most appropriate question is, will the Conservatives actually look at the data? The data will tell you that 8 out of 10 Canadian families get more money back. That's a lie, it's man. actually an affordability measure. If the Honourable Member would actually look at the research done by the University of Calgary, she would know that. But, Mr. Speaker, I think Canadians really need to understand that the Conservative approach to climate change is to let the planet burn. It is to leave an <laughs> impoverished environment and an impoverished economy for the future of our children. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> Wilkinson's such a liar, man. Uh, affordability measure, really? 
Oh, this guy just, he always pulls up these stupid numbers, which are all tweaked in the, in his favor. People do not get more money back. It's just a fact. You, any way you do the math. I saw an accountant do the math. He came up with $8,200 a year. I initially did the math two months ago, which was still $7,500 a year. Uh, even if you use a more conservative approach to uh, doing the math, you'll end up with like 4000 400 something like that. I just did the gas tax on a couple videos ago If you add in the home heating and once you add in the food then boom It just goes right through the roof You're adding thousands for food let alone all the other products we buy everything that comes on a truck They're getting carbon tax even that the carbon tax sheet that I was looking at with all the different uh, Different types of fuel and the amounts of carbon tax on it Jet fuel is on there too. So if you're taking planes, the costs are gone up there too. The carbon tax affects everything. And this fool thinks he can trick us with these stupid numbers. Just keep crapping out this rhetoric. It's beyond belief. The honorable member from Lethbridge. The contrast could not be more stark when it comes to the liberals versus the conservatives. And your opposition to the Canadian people. Once again, once again, colleagues, the chair uh, could not hear the question being asked <laughs> by the honourable member. Children, and honorable member I can't hear. The, chair. the honourable member from Lethbridge, from the top. It's shameful that my colleagues across the way would clap for a 23% increase in the carbon tax when Canadians are lining up with the Millions of Canadians cannot afford to put food on their tables, and these folks over here stand and clap. That's that is shameful. When will they grow? Go on. She's pissed. You can call them to account. You can call them to account. You can call them to account. She's scolding him. She's scolding the speaker. <laughs> she scolded them both. They need it. Those liberals are just absolute terrible human beings. They're just terrible. Like, what's wrong with these people? They just intentionally cause suffering. So, uh, time has is, is, is come awfully close to the end of uh, the honorable member's question. I'd like to reassure the honorable member the chair nor the table had heard a comment that was unparliamentary. So, uh, this is why it is. This is why it is very important to all members. <laughs> colleagues, <laughs> colleagues, colleagues, colleagues. As I was saying to colleagues, is that it's so important for us to keep our voices down and to restrain ourselves. Enough, Fergus. Enough. I'm going to ask the honourable member once again to please, and, and ask him, please follow the good example of his whip and restrain himself while this chair is talking. The honourable member from New Brunswick Southwest. You, you, you didn't get an answer. Terribly, I'm terribly sorry. I'm terribly sorry. The honourable, the honourable member, uh, the honourable minister, uh, to resign. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what did he just say to resign? Fergus drunk man? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> he's like He's lost his marbles. This is wild. Absolutely wild. She didn't even get her question out. She just scolded the two of them and that was it. All members, please restrain. So I'm going to give the honorable member from Lethbridge 10 seconds to put her question left if she chooses to go. exercise that. Uh, to allow 10 seconds left to ask her question. Would the honorable member from Lethbridge like to have those 10 seconds? Really? Mr. Speaker, the minister across the way had something to say to me before perhaps they'd say it on the record. <laughs> Speak up, let's hear it. The Honourable, the Honourable President of the Treasury Board. Mr. Speaker, on this side of the House, we agree that the contrast could not be more stark. Mm -hmm. yes. Could not be more stark, Mr. Speaker, because of the Canada carbon rebate, we 
are putting money back in the pockets of Canadians in the Honourable Member's own province, Mr. Speaker. $1,800 will go back to Canadian and Albertan families because of the Canada carbon rebate, Mr. Speaker. $1,200 will go to <laughs> I want to remind members uh, to be very judicious if they're going to quote something, quote from something, but otherwise it could be perceived as a prop. So I'll ask the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to continue. She has six seconds left. She's not allowed. Miss, Mr. Speaker, I'll close by saying that the Leader of the Opposition's climate denial would ask all of the rebates that we are giving. <laughs> the Honourable Member from Just New cut her off. Southwest. Canadians are paying higher prices because of sky high taxes. Today in New Brunswick, we pay over 60, almost 60 cents more for gasoline per litre than they do in neighbouring Maine. On April 1st, the carbon tax is going to go again, up again, 23%. Will the Liberals axe the carbon tax and give Canadians a break? Yeah. Great yeah, and on Vancouver Island here where I live, we have among the highest gas prices in North America. Uh, gas just went up 20 cents the other day. It was 160. Now it's 179. So post down in the comments below what your gas price is. I'm sitting at 179 in winter, which should be around 140. In summertime, we go up to 220. So it gets bad out here. So where we get a bit of savings from the lack of heating needed, uh, we don't get the minus 30 here. We do pay a lot more for gas than most other places in the country. Obviously, up north, you guys got you got the worst of both ends. I should note, too, the carbon tax, they talk about getting more money back. I live in BC. And we have this stupid BC carbon tax. The most anyone can get is $447 back as a single person. So by doing the math, it doesn't matter what math you do. 447 bucks is not even like a quarter. It's not even an eighth, a sixteenth of what we're actually paying. It's ridiculous. So these liberals need to stop lying like a bunch of bonehead losers. Mr. Speaker, what do you call someone who says one thing and does the other? A liberal. <laughs> The Conservative Party says they have principles. If you don't like, they have other principles. Oh. In their 2021 platform, on which every one of those members of Parliament was elected, the platform said, quote, we recognize that the most efficient way to reduce our emissions is to use pricing mechanisms. Oh. The Conservative position is not only devoid of facts, Mr. Speaker, but their position is the height of hypocrisy. How can Canadians believe anything these folks say? Hey! The Honourable Member from New Brunswick Southwest. Mr. Speaker, let's remember, these Liberals promised they would never increase the carbon tax by more than $50 a ton. It's skyrocketing up to $270 a ton. It's going to go up again on April the 1st. And voters in my district see that every day they cross the line to buy gas in Maine, 50 cents less a liter cheaper. On top of that, they're now collecting the HST and the GST on, on, uh, on gasoline and energy prices. Another $5 billion. When are these Liberals going to start punishing, stop punishing Canadians and give Canadians a break? Canadians are sick and tired of seeing the NDP leader pretend to be outraged over the Arrive scam. Let me remind the House that the Prime Minister needed votes to keep funding his $60 million Arrive scam, and the NDP came to their rescue. Joining Conservatives Conservatives and voting no would have saved Canadians tens of millions of dollars. Here, here. Does the coalition between the Prime Minister and the NDP require them to fund the Arrive scam? Here, here. Well, Mr. Speaker, if we just move on from the slogans written in the leader's office for one moment while I address another issue that would actually help Canadians today. On this order paper, Bill C-35, which will guarantee lower child care costs for every single mother and father. <laughs> Stephen McKinnon's diaper is full. Full on tantrum from him today. The honorable member from Brantford Grant. Thank you. 
this member stands for the rights of Canadians and getting to the heart of this $60 million arrive scam. They voted yes at least eight times to give tens of millions of cost overruns, money for nothing contracts to shell companies, including $20 million contract to a pay to a person two person basement business that wrote the terms for their own contract. This Prime Minister is not worth the cost nor the corruption. I'll ask again, what did they have to do to arrive to get them to to require them to fund the Arise scam? Here, 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 here. The Honourable Government House Leader. Well, I see that answer had a little little effect, but I would again encourage my honourable colleague instead of taking all the inbound invective and all the all the rage farming from the leader's office, <laughs> that he trudge back down that long hallway to his leader's office and say, Mr. Leader, you know what we can do today? We can bring down dental care costs for Canadians by passing the bill of the fall economic statement that will help seniors, that will help uh, poor families, that will help children in this country. We can have an impact today on Canadians' lives. Stand up and vote for Canadians! These Liberals are so pathetic. They're just so pathetic. There's so many things they could do today to actually help us. They, they don't care. They do not care about us one bit. Well, quite the lively House of Commons there. Uh, Rachel Thomas just scolding the Liberals, scolding the Speaker. And they're just arrogant and, as usual, insulting. Just typical Liberal. Don't care about Canadians. Crapping on Canadians. That's all they really do. Taking more of our money. Giving us nothing in return. Yeah. That's the state of Canada. So if you want to check out some merch, I've got that link down below as well. Some of my hiking videos. Why don't you thumbs up and subscribe. Turn on the bell notification so you get my videos notified every time they come out. Stay warm, stay fed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Moose is on the loose. <laughs>